Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Tom Popo, a Japanese comedy from 1985 that was directed by Juzo Itami. Now, I recently posted a top five list of my favorite films from this director. I will include a link to that video in the description box below, so check it out. This video is my review of Tom Popo, which is arguably the most critically acclaimed movie in Itami's entire filmography. So the film actually begins with a side character, who is played by Koji Yakusho. He's a suave ladies man who immediately breaks the fourth wall and addresses the audience in a movie theater. After that little introduction, we shift to the main story. Two truckers ride into a town and stop by a small uh, ramen soup restaurant. After an altercation with some customers there, they decide to stick around and help the lady owner hone her cooking skills because, you know, her ramen could use a lot of improvement. And these truckers are determined to help her create a truly fantastic soup. So Tom Popo revolves around this main plot with a lot of emphasis uh, on researching ways to improve ramen and avoid the common pitfalls that are associated with that kind of food. That's a huge positive for me because I love it when uh, movies or television series get into the details of food preparation. So there's a lot of interesting stuff here in that regard. There are also some rivalries with some competing restaurants along the way and stuff like that. However, there are also some brief side plots that are peppered in throughout the runtime as well. Now I already mentioned Koji Yakusho's character who is focused on romantic evenings with his lover, which incorporate food of course. Another example is a funny lunch meeting between businessmen that provides a hilarious act of disobedience involving work etiquette. One interesting aspect is that these side plots usually begin as these people walk by one another. So the camera will be following some characters that we've been following for a little while, and then it simply reshifts its focus to new characters that just pass by or in the same area. I thought that was a pretty neat way to transition into the side plots. I think this might be the first film that I've ever seen do that, although there's, there's been others, of course. Now, as you might expect from the plot synopsis, the comedy in Tampopo revolves entirely around food. Even the side plots involve food in one way or another. Now, the humor is grounded in everyday events, but it's also surprisingly absurd at the very same time. It's kind of hard to explain without spoiling specific moments, but if you've seen the film, you probably know what I'm talking about. One scene that comes to mind is the one involving an egg yolk, which was very odd, but undeniably memorable, for sure. There are definitely a bunch of unforgettable scenes in this movie. That's one of the reasons why it's so special and held in such a high regard. I really enjoyed the humor in Tom Popo, and my personal favorite scene is that business meeting at the French restaurant, which I alluded to earlier, because that's something that uh, I might do myself. I've, uh, I've been known to to bust some budgets uh, in the work dining uh, budget. So there are a few recognizable faces in this cast as well. The lead actress, Nobuko Miyamoto, was in a bunch of this director's other films. So if you've seen any of Itami's other movies, then you will immediately recognize her. She's a very good actress, actually. You know, but most viewers will recognize Koji Yakusho and Ken Watanabe, who have the supporting roles. You know, Yoriko Doguchi, also has a brief cameo as an oyster girl who is catching oysters. She appeared in a bunch of Kiyoshi Kurosawa's earlier films, and it's always nice to see her pop up as well. But some viewers will be surprised when they see Ken Watanabe in this, because most people are used to seeing him in, the, uh, in his Hollywood productions. But he's, he's good in this as well. So there's, there is a bit of nudity and sensuality present in Tom Popo. You know, not much, but if you're going to watch this with kids, you may want to screen it first just to make sure that the, the naughty bits are, are okay for your kids to watch. One possible complaint against this movie is that it meanders a little bit. You know, the script does venture out into those aforementioned subplots, many of which only last for a few minutes and are primarily used for comedic purposes, but, you know, some viewers may find this film a little bit unfocused. I like this kind of storytelling structure when it's done well, and I think it's done well here. The only other warning I need to give is that this movie will make you hungry. So, I do not recommend watching this on an empty stomach. I would, I would watch this after dinner instead of before. I do highly recommend Tom Popo. 
It's a must-watch. Uh, some critics online have considered it one of their favorite films. And we're, I'm not even talking about critics that focus on Asian movies. I'm talking uh, critics that uh, mostly watch Hollywood stuff. And then they get into Tom Popo because it's actually part of the Criterion Collection. So it has a very nice release in the Criterion Collection. It's also available on multiple streaming sites. So, you know, people are, more people are seeing this. And it's starting to make some, some favorites lists out there. So if you have not seen it... I definitely recommend it. It's considered by some to be one, uh, one of the best Japanese films of the 80s. So if you're exploring that era, you got to watch it. And as always, I'll see you next time.